Dave, how's it going today? Pretty good, Will. How you doing? Doing well. So I hear that you are interested in seeing what Fleet has to offer for mobile device management. Is that right? Definitely. Super excited to see what you guys got going on. Yeah. Can I ask, what are you currently using for your Macs today? We are we are using uh, Jamf. I've been using it for many years. Okay. Any things that you're you're seeing currently with Jamf that you're looking to see what else is out there? Any issues that you're currently finding these days? You know, it's been pretty good for us. Um, it's we've used it for quite a while. Um, just more interested to see kind of like from a GitOps perspective, like what what other products are doing in the market, and just getting um, you know kind of like more in line with the times, leveraging GitOps. Okay. And I understand that you have already seen a little bit of what Fleet can do with OS Query. Is that right? Yeah, I've. I mean, uh, the security team uh, has used OS Query, and and they've um, provided the binary for deployment. And on our team, we've uh, you know deployed it to different prod servers and other devices in our org. And yeah, so I'm familiar with the package and how to create it, um, but haven't really gone into using OS Query much in my day to day. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of what we have here. Um, just to, you know, kind of go over some, we have a couple slides here, I'm not going to read through them fully, but uh, it's device management built for IT that security is approving. And so some of the things we'll talk about and we'll show real quick is just what the MDM migration looks like, how to run MDM commands, uh, show you automated enrollment from fleets perspective and go over configuration profile deployments and OS updates. How's that sound to you? Sounds great. Awesome. And so can you see my screen? Sure can, yeah. Perfect. So you've seen this before. This is the fleet uh, fleet homepage, the dashboard. This is our dog food instance. So this is uh, what we're actually using internally at fleet. My machine is also enrolled in this uh, instance. And so as you've seen some of these other sections, what I'm going to jump to here is the control section. So in the control section, uh, you're going to get some basic information first and foremost. So I'm going to actually show you the OS updates first, since that's right here. And for OS updates currently, we're actually leveraging Nudge. Are you familiar with Nudge at all? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So you can see down here, it's a super easy configuration for Nudge that we currently have. Um, you'll set the minimum version and what the deadline is. And then for any Macs in your fleet, they will get these prompts that you can see here on the right side um, to go ahead and get notified to update their machines when new OS releases are released. And you go ahead and update these settings. Any questions on this? Yeah, I mean, I've used Nudge before. I see guys are using the simple form of of nudge like can i customize that can i can i use um my current config yeah so nudge definitely can use a configuration profile we do have it set to the simple configuration like you mentioned um i believe we're looking at exploring um what other options we can leverage with nudge and we have a there's a current feature request that you can view on our github page uh, that kind of talks more about that and and we'll actually walk through when we get a little bit closer to supporting that. Um, cool. You'll be able to see those updates directly on that uh, GitHub issue. Yeah, I like the simple uh, format too. It's um, And I think what what's awesome here is that I won't have to manage, like you all are just managing the JSON, right? So I don't have to do that anymore. Right. Yeah, you just set these two settings and that's all you'll need to do. That's That's cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it makes it simpler for you. Um, you're not pushing out a whole new profile. You can just update these settings, hit save, and you're good to go. Great. In regards to OS settings or configuration profiles, uh, so what we have here first and foremost is disk encryption. That seems to be a common one that everybody is concerned about. And for disk encryption on Mac OS devices, we are using File Vault 2. Uh, but what you'll notice here at the top is these four statuses. And so just like any other MDM out there, we can get the basic statuses of, you know, failed, pending, or verifying when you're pushing out MD or configuration profiles. 
But where we take that one step further, we call it our double checkmark verification system. So we're actually leveraging the telemetry data that you can get from OS Query to verify or to, to double check that the settings that you're enforcing with those configuration profiles are actually being applied to the device. You're not sitting in that mindset of, is this actually applied or not, even though it says it's installed? Um, we'll actually do that secondary check for you. How's okay, that and that's, that's OS Query that's saying that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's leveraging the power of OS Query with the, it's about 321 tables that we can report on uh, across the uh, OSs. Very cool. Yeah. Any other questions on that portion at all? Uh, how do I actually, like, you, that's a, a type of config profile, I guess, you're, you're sending down. How do I just get a regular config profile deployed? Yeah. Absolutely. So if you were to click on the custom settings, uh, and I can actually switch. I know that you were able to see teams uh, when you were looking at the other portions of fleet. So I'll switch to a team that has some uh, custom settings in here. This is what we consider the configuration profiles. And you can actually just go ahead and upload a configuration profile that you're pulling from, say, another MDM if you're downloading it from there. Or have you heard of iAmazing Profile Editor before? Yep, yep. Okay, perfect. So you can go ahead and create your configuration profiles directly in iAmazing Profile Editor, and you can upload those into here. Um, what's nice about this too is as you go ahead and set the or upload these in here, uh, you can either set it to all host or you can set it to custom host, and that's using our labels feature. So you can set what labels you want to apply for those configuration profiles. Oh, so that's like uh, kind of like smart groups. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit like that. So we can set labels that are... Uh, currently, labels are actually their SQL queries to look for certain pieces of uh, information off those devices. Um, you can set that. In fact, I'll, I'll go back here. So if you were to go into the host tab and you were to see the labels here, uh, this is where you can add a new, a new uh, label into Fleet. So it's just similar to building a query. You're building a SQL, st uh, SQL statement that will look for some information on those devices. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. And so any other questions, though, before we move on about configuration profiles or custom settings? No, it looks good so far. Okay, perfect. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to show, so I'm going to actually skip here, is running a con or running an MDM command on a device. So I'm sure that you're used to certain commands like, say, restart your device, a lock a device, wipe a device, certain things like that that you can see in other MDMs. Uh, there's two ways that we can do that in Fleet. So I'm going to actually pull up one of my devices here. And so if I can find it, this is a VM that I actually have. I'll show you in just a second. But when it comes to things like lock or wipe, we have those kind of built right in. Um, so if you go to the actions button here, you can select those for lock or wipe. Uh, but you, those aren't the only things that you're capable of doing. You can actually run any MDM command on a device. You just need to build the uh, build the um, the XML file for that. And so what I can do is I can actually show you what that looks whoa, like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on here, Will. So like anybody can just go in here and lock and wipe my device? No, no, no. So yeah, so that's another thing. Uh, I have full admin access to this instance. Ah, uh, uh, gotcha. Can, you can, yeah, no, if you were to take a look at our setting or settings or go to manage users, you can actually edit the statuses or the roles for the users in fleet. Um, definitely, you don't want to make or you want to make sure that not everybody can just wipe a device at random. Um, but you can set things, set certain RBAC controls for like you want to assign them to certain teams. And then you can actually set between four different statuses. Uh, if you were to take a look at this link, you can actually see what those statuses break down to uh, as far as what they have access to. But absolutely, you can uh, you can limit that function to uh, only those who need it within Fleet. Uh, and how does that work with GitOps? I see there's a GitOps user. Yeah, so with a GitOps user, we can run, uh, we can perform certain actions in GitOps uh, using GitOps workflows. Uh, I can show you a little bit more of that at the uh, at the end if that works for you. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. You're gonna. I think you're gonna show. Uh, I think you're gonna show a command. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you see my screen here? Yep. All right. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So this is a restart device XML file that I have locally on my computer, and we have a command line interface tool called Fleet Control. 
Uh, I just need to move my zoom window here because it's uh, nice and right in the way. So with our fleet control tool, we can actually run those commands directly on the device. So if I go ahead and run that, I actually have a VM here that I think it's actually already running. So that's the beauty of MDM. It's going to try and run that. And as you can see, it's restarting that device. So that device restarted once I entered that command in using the MDM protocol. Gotcha. And how do I see the, do you see the, get, a, get the results there? Uh... Yeah. So if you go ahead and take a look here in the bottom in this terminal window, uh, you can see what it's going to do. Um, but yeah, and then if you were to copy the command here at the bottom to see the results, go ahead and hit paste. Cool. So that's like the raw data coming back from uh, the MDM API. Absolutely. So you can cool. verify that what you're running is is actually taking place. And can I see that in the UI somewhere? Yeah, so currently, and I'll go back to go back to our instance. And so this is that VM that we were taking a look at. Currently, you can see script activity in here, uh, but coming soon will be the to, you'll be able to see anything that's running on that device, including those MDM commands. Cool, that's awesome. Any other questions regarding MDM commands running on devices? Nope. All right, so I'll go back to the control section. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is the setup experience. So we have the ability to tie in with Apple Business Manager to leverage automated device enrollments or formerly DEP is, is what it used to be called. Uh, with this, you can also enable end user authentication. So you can tie it into an IDP. And that way, the benefit to that is only those that are part of your organization can actually set up those devices. Um, so we show down here in this little video or this little GIF, uh, Okta, but we actually use uh, Google in-house at Fleet. And so you can leverage any IDP for this portion. Any Great. questions on that? Nope. Awesome. One other thing that we can leverage with the setup experience is a bootstrap package. Uh, so with this bootstrap package, you can package up anything like say you leverage monkey in your environment, or you want to package together a few startup scripts or some other packages that are important to your organization. Uh, you can bundle those up and you can actually put those here. And then as devices or as those Mac OS devices are setting up, they'll install that package as part of the setup process. Cool. Yeah. And then you were probably also wondering about what does it take for migration, right? Migration is a big concern for everybody, especially on the Mac OS MDM side. We all know that migration is can be a little bit painful at times, uh, mainly because of user approved MDM. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to our settings and then integration and go to the automatic enrollment portion. And so, oh, actually it's the mobile device management portion. Uh, so what you can see here is within Fleet, we've actually created an end user migration workflow that you can enable. And what this will do is it will actually, once you push out the Fleet agent, you'll want to do that from your current MDM. And then we can actually help you configure a way to unenroll it from your current MDM. And then it will kick off this automated workflow to, uh, or this workflow to help end users migrate. It's kind of like a step-by-step -step process on what they need to do. Any questions on this at all? I see it's a voluntary or forced. What does that what does that look like? What's the difference? So yeah, the voluntary and forced options here. So the voluntary method, uh, that's where the end user is going to have to click on the fleet icon, and that will take them to my their my device page. And there's going to be a prompt there at the top for them to get enrolled into MDM. The forced method. Uh, that's where what it's doing is you can see here, there's going to be a window that pops up every 15 to 20 minutes on that end user's device. It's the uh, profiles renew command that's running on that device to help them get it enrolled into MDM. Gotcha. So what, what does that webhook URL do there? Yeah, so this webhook URL, what it is, and I'll actually pop up this here. Uh, it, if you're using some sort of automation tool such as Tines or Okta Workflows, you can actually take this information yourself and you can, it'll help with the unenrollment process from your current MDM. However, if you're not familiar with something like Tines or Octa Workflows, if you're not doing that on your own, we can actually do all this for you as part of the migration uh, assistance if you were to purchase Fleet. That's awesome. Yeah, we use Tines here. I can totally do that. 
Awesome. Yeah. So you can see the data here that you would need and you can just populate that into a, into a story in tons. Cool. Cool. That's great.